Got him. Alright, baby. Got him. Hello, baby. You are serious weight. There he is again. It is big trout, big trout city back here. Here we go. All right, you guys, that is an absolute Mogan right there. How about that? Hey, what's going on, you guys? I'm Dan from Savannah, and welcome back to Low Country Fishing. Uh, so this morning, I was reading through some of the comments from my previous videos. And um, kind of a reoccurring question that keeps getting brought up is how I make my jig head selections for the areas that I fish. What size hook am I using? What weight am I using? When do I use a weedless over an open exposed jig head? When do I use a Texas eye over an SWS chin lock? So I'm gonna kind of break all that stuff down. I'm gonna show you exactly what I use, how I use it, why I use it, and why I use it with certain artificial imitations, these uh, paddle tails and shrimp imitations. So if you guys are really interested in diving in and learning the method to my madness, if you could say that, um, then you guys stick around. It's going to be a good episode. All right, so let's start with the exposed hook options. Um, these two on the left here are eye strike products. This is the 1 8 ounce trout eye, and this is a 3 16 ounce trout eye. The one to the right of it is a Z-Man. It says they're finesse jig heads. This is in the quarter and this is in a 3 8 um, When I make a selection based on the bait size that I'm wanting to throw, I'm usually trying to match the hatch. Meaning, if I see small bait in the water, small mullet, small shrimp, etc., I'm gonna throw something small because that is the bait that's present and that's the bait that the fish are being able to see uh, during that exact time period. So as far as the weight selection goes, I will throw a heavier weight depending on what the tide and what the current is doing. If I'm fishing more towards the top of the tide or the very bottom of the tide, I'm gonna throw a lighter jig head. And the reason I do that is because it allows me to present that bait with as less splash as possible once my lure hits the water. If you throw at low tide and shallow water a big 3 8 or half ounce style jig head, you're gonna make a big splash, it's gonna make a big nasty presentation and it could be enough to spook the fish. So when you think about low current periods, think less weight. Uh, next row down here, these are the eye strike redfish eye jig heads. Now these are a full rot hook size. This is a 1 8, this is a quarter, and this is a 3 8. Same, same uh, type of mentality goes into hook selection with these as I explained with these. What this 4 aught longer shank um, hook gives you the option to do is to throw a larger bait profile. So with this top row here, I would be more concentrated on throwing my two, two and a half, three inch um, artificial baits, whether they're paddle tails or they're shrimp imitations. Um, or if I want to throw a larger bait presentation, like a four inch or possibly even a five inch paddle tail or shrimp imitation, I'll go with these longer, sh uh, longer shank jig heads. Now I'll compare them side by side and you can see how much bigger in the eye strike category their, their four out long shank is compared to the one on the right here, their short shank. All right, so let's talk real briefly on where and why I would throw these open exposed jig heads like this. So if I'm fishing around areas that does not have a lot of structure, meaning not a lot of grass, not a lot of oyster beds, live oyster beds, not fishing heavy and tight to dock pilings around rocks, etc. I would throw something like this. And the reason I would throw these is because I don't have to worry about my hook point getting snagged. Uh, if, I'm fish if I'm fishing tighter to structure around those other options that I talked about, I would definitely go with the weedless setup. Now, a benefit of throwing an exposed uh, hook point versus a weedless is you are going to have better hook sets. These exposed hooks are going to set better and faster in a fish's mouth when you compare it to weedless hooks. I have missed my fair share of fish because they hit the bait extremely fast. They figure out it's a soft plastic. My procure was probably wore off and it's not what they wanted to eat. So they spit it out and they go back on with their life. When you have these exposed hook points like this, 
that fish doesn't generally get away once that thing gets in his mouth, especially if you're fishing with lighter weight hooks and lighter weight line and leader, uh, which is why I'm a big proponent of throwing 10 pound braid and 20 pound leader. All right, so let's talk about good old tried and true eye strike Texas eye jig head. Now this is not the finesse or the XL. This is the original, the 3.0 hook size. These are the three weights that they sell and I keep all of them on board for the exact reasons that I explained uh, my weight selection in the previous section. This is the 1 8th, this is a 3 16th, and this is a quarter. Now, eye color really is for the angler's choice. Uh, the fish don't care what color an eye is. We can have that argument all day that contrast helps, it doesn't help. It doesn't matter to me, you guys. I catch tons of fish with green, I catch tons of fish with pearl, with a silver color, um, with glow, it doesn't really matter. But the reason I like to throw these jig heads is because of the way this hook articulates. This is an offset worm hook that's basically attached to a weighted jig head. As I've explained in some of my previous videos, this hook point articulates and really brings this um, jig head to life and it'll really bring your artificial lure to life. It'll give it some really wild kicking action and then when you stop bouncing that jig head on the bottom or just stop it in general on the bottom, that hook point swings straight up if you pair it with Z-Man products because Z-Man are naturally buoyant and that puts that hook point straight up in the water column and right in the fish's mouth when they go to eat and it incre increases your hook set. So this is why I like to fish these things. Now, the types of areas that I like to fish these, I'll pull these guys out if I'm fishing around the edges of oysters, if I'm fishing in creek mouths where I'm not really sure where the oysters are and the reason I fish these is because I like, again, the action that these things give. Um, you can slow swim them, you can bounce them, etc. All right, so let's talk about Z-Man SWS chin locks. So the two chin locks sizes that I like to throw are the 4 aught one eighth ounce and the 4 aught one sixth ounce. Now in this SWS chin lock line, they make them all the way from a 2 aught to a 12 aught. Now the weights still come into play as far as when I throw these. Uh, in different type of tide and current conditions. Um, but realistically, you guys, my go-to is this. This is the 1 6th ounce. If you divide one by six, it brings you up somewhere just a little shy of 3 16 of an ounce. This 3 16 ounce is the largest weight that the SWS chin lock line makes in a four aught hook size. So again, if you're wanting to throw three and four inch artificial imitations, in and around heavy structure, these Texas size are gonna be your go-to. If you're gonna be fishing over or on top of oysters and you want it to slide and dance across the top of them a little easier, go with this belly weighted option here in the SWS chin lock line. And this is pretty much the main two hooks that I have rigged up and ready to go all the time. Um, I fish basically three or four rods, I will have one rod dedicated to this with this exact weight, and I will have another rod dedicated to this, and I will start off with a 3 16 ounce. If I start getting more current, I'll step up to the quarter ounce, um, but that gives me my weedless options. Now, on my third rod, I will throw an exposed jig head. Um, it will more than likely be a trout eye, 3 16 on a 3 inch paddle tail. And my fourth rod will be what I call my utility rod. That utility rod can be a popping cork, it can be a topwater, it can be a spoon, it can be any type of a uh, diving plug, a suspending twitch bait, any of the mirrodine lines. Um, that utility rod really fits multiple types of uh, uh, lure selections. But for my main three rods, this is exactly what it's gonna look like in a three inch and a four inch imitation. All right, you guys, so I hope this kind of clears the air a little bit as far as um, the why and the how uh, I use these jig heads and as far as the selection process goes for them. Um, again, if you have any questions that come up in my videos, feel free to fire them away down in the comment section below. Um, I literally have a list of videos um, that I have written down that I'm going to do based off of just comment and feedback from you guys. Uh, so please keep all that stuff coming. Uh, but if you enjoyed today's video, please drop a big thumbs up. If you haven't got a chance to subscribe, Click that button now and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Take care.
God bless.